Good day, everybody. It's Greg Schnell, and I am here with the May 25th edition of Market Roundup. Thanks for taking the time to join me. We got a lot to fire through. Uh, so for today's agenda, lower highs and higher lows on the S&P, but a lower close. Russell and the NASDAQ both made lower lows. So uh, not quite as good. Uh, more distribution days on the NASDAQ, which um, is quite a few, actually. So I actually think we're going lower here. Uh, living on the edge or past the edge, all of my breadth data suggests we're in an extremely weak location and not usually a place we bounce from once it gets this week. Oil spills, uh, lumber was flat and copper was crushed. Financials are continuing to struggle. They made uh, lower lows and a lower close, so we'll keep watching. Currency, big moves. Um, US dollar didn't do much um, late in the week. Uh, the big problem we had with the um, US dollar, it, well, not the big problem, it closed near, uh, well, I'll call it middle of the range for 10 days, but definitely uh, below last week. So, um, uh, how do I say that? It closed near the lows of this week in the middle of the range of the prior week. So uh, keep watching the US dollar. We, that's got to be something to watch for. Uh, some people think that uh, the US dollar is going to roll over here. And if that was to be true, that would matter. Russia and India and Australia, new highs. And that is just a strange grouping. Now, both India and Australia had new elections that maybe caused the spark. Um Russia is just very interesting, and maybe that's uh, U.S. stops supplying China, so maybe there's something else going on there. Don't know, but that one's pumping up. And gold, and, and remember, it's kind of an oil-based uh, economy, and oil had a tough week, so a bit of a surprise there. Gold and silver, very quiet volume, and we'll point out that and uh, why we should keep watching. So anyway, lots to get through. Let's fire it up. So first of all, the uh, advanced decline line, you can see that we've broken every trend line I can draw here. And the only thing we're, we haven't done yet is broken below the March lows. Um, so this is, I'll call it teeter-tottering here. Uh, the, the advanced decline line using a moving average, pretty weak. And again, I don't, um, just even if we just had a six-week decline, um, that would still mean we've got another three weeks to go. And that would put us right about the middle of the Fed meeting. Okay, um, for the high lows, you can see we're well below here. We're down at a level where, you know, we have bounced before, but the issue here was we didn't have any rally going on. And so that's kind of what I'm more worried about. Um, in 2016, we kind of went sideways like this and then finally rallied. Um, so maybe there's something there, but we didn't do that on the New York composite. We got... We got a thrust much, much earlier than we got here. And so uh, between the two of them, it doesn't give me any uh, belief that we're ready to pop higher. Obviously, if some China deal came out, that would probably change the news. Um, for the advanced decline line here, we're just jogging sideways. But for the high-low data... So you can see back in 2016, this perked right up above the 100 level very early on and gave us some pretty good clues that new bull market. Here we've kind of, we we kind of got above, but we, we're down near 100 here this week. Uh, back in that 2016 time frame after we broke off the lows, we, you know, we didn't even make it there. The first time we got to it was July of, or August of 2017. So, um, Again, my concern is everything is set up quite bearish here, and I don't really see it getting better. Looking at the uh, Canadian market real brief, uh, they're continuing to make lower um, advanced decline levels, and on the high-low data, falling below the zero line again and again. And the Canadian market seems to be, you know, once it goes below there, that's a pretty major deal. Uh, we had a brief blip back in 2016, but for the most part, when that rolls over, you know, almost all of them were were uh, recognizable drops that you wanted to miss out on. So, Canadian market giving us some clues that things are still weak. Um, U.S. high-low data, um, still more of these red buttons starting to show up over here on the right side, so that's not very bullish. The NIMO is right at 400, and normally um, the next chart, or the summation index is at 400. Uh, we can see the NIMO continues to jog below the lower half here, but when the summation index falls below 400, that's usually when we're in a downtrend. So to see the market breaking while it was still up at this high level, we saw this in an example back in 
2016 and it was a pullback into the November low. That was the election low. Uh, it was actually a Fed meeting that started the rally and then the election uh, got it going on. So lots of lots of room here for for the market to break down if this summation index is going to drop. So keep your eye on that. I'd say we're right at the level. And here's the summation index showing just how quickly and precipitously it's kind of falling away. Uh, we saw this back in 2016, this kind of seven, eight week in a row, and the market didn't do much here. But here we've, we're coming down pretty hard, actually. Uh, so we'll keep watching and just see, I think this 12,500 level starting to be pretty important on the New York Composite. The NASDAQ, same thing, this thing is just dripping lower. And uh, you know, the zero level is not quite as important as the minus 200 level on the NASDAQ. So keep watching it from that perspective. Okay, getting into the bullish percent indexes, these are a mess. Um, I circled five different cases here where the market jogged um, tightly and and then broke down. And I could have done this one, but it didn't really look kind of like the other ones. Uh, but anyway, here we are at 55% and breaking lower. We're now less than 50% of the stocks are on a buy signal and only 37% or 38% are above their 200-day moving average. That just doesn't sound that bullish to me. And again, I pointed out that this this um, topping structure here in in the percentage of stocks above the 200-day moving average was very similar to the October 2007 high, um, especially after a, a deep dip to bounce up to that level and stall there. Um, kind of worrying, maybe back in the 0405 period we had something similar, so we'll just see where we end up here, but this looks pretty weak to me. Okay, uh, the NASDAQ 100, so we're below 50% are on a buy signal, only 48, but still 60% are above their 200-day moving average. But what you can see here is early in 2018, this was kind of a level that had to hold, so I'd say we've got a little wiggle room, but I, you know I wouldn't use a, I wouldn't say we could drop another two or three percent without uh, quickly kind of accelerating lower. Anyway, the good news is we're starting to get down where we can look for a bottom, as opposed to a top. Uh, new, the. New York Composite, we're at 50%. That's pretty low. Um, this is a level where things have bounced in the past, but again, we barely got up above uh, 60% and have now rolled over. And we saw in October 2019 that this was a pretty critical level. So keep watching. I don't have any comfort here. And there's 51% of the stocks above their 200 day moving average. So, you know, 38% on the NASDAQ and 51% on the New York Composite. I'm having trouble calling it a big wide bull market. S&P 500, 55% uh, or 56% of the stocks are above their 200 day and 58% are above their 200, sorry, above their 200 day is 58% and 56% of the stocks are on a buy signal. But notice all through 2016, 17, 18, until we had the January slam, uh, we didn't have a low way down at this level. We rallied back up roughly similar levels, and that's where we broke down from meaningfully in the October, November, December time frame. So to me, it looks like we're breaking down, but um, I'd say we're at last gasp is best. Um, sure not seeing the levels that I would like to have seen. I wanted us to see up, get back up in this big bull thrust here, and we certainly didn't do that. Okay. Um, the Toronto Stock Exchange actually holding in surprisingly well. There's no real rollover like we saw even on the S&P. So let's just go back one chart. Um, for the S&P, what we see is, you know, this big drop from 80 to 55. Well, on the Canadian market, we never got up there and we, we haven't fallen down either. We're only at 60%, but we just keep hanging here. So uh, we'll see. But the percentage of stocks above the 200-day got up around, whatever, 67% and is now only 57%. So not quite um, as as bullish. Um, I don't really, the energy sector is beaten down, gold sector is beaten down, so those charts are of no value. Um, oil expir options expiration, we've been dropping since last Friday. So um, again, that one... Still continues to roll over, and the market top was a Fed meeting. So anyway, you can see that there's a head and shoulder structure here. 
call it uh, 250 above it. So 250 below it would put us down to 2, 2650 um, would be where we'd target it if this breaks down. NASDAQ's a little farther. This is 500 points. Um, so we'd track down to 6800. Okay, um, Fed meeting, again, marked the top of the market perfectly. Um, we've seen that in two previous examples. Sure enough, uh, down we've come. We're trying to hold this, and again, you can see the head and shoulders top a little bit better here, but these clear arch levels right around 2,800, and there hasn't been any real volume stepping in to buy this market either, so that makes me a little more concerned that there's no interest here. Um, but as we go into the selling, then that's when I would be watching. Uh, as we look at the market fall apart here, we had low, not low volume, but we had average volume. And then it was really kind of the spikes in volume that gave us the, the final sell signal. Then the volume pulled right back to average and we rolled back over. Here we're behaving very nonchalantly. Um, in this pullback in early or late March, the volume was very light. In April, it got even lighter, even on the road higher. Um, as we got up to the top, we never did get a volume spike, kind of saying, I love this market. But we're rolling over now. And again, the volume has been declining for a while here. So I, I would say that we're running out of buyers. Um, and and maybe, maybe people think that there's a rally coming that that's fine. Um, just looks very uh, weak to me in terms of interest. So monthly performance, we're down three and a half percent on the month. Year to date performance, we're still up 12.7 percent. So that's pretty good. And this blue line represents the previous market top back in January 2018. Uh, so here we are sitting, this is the January 2018 highs, and then you break down. And I think the point I want to make here is the, the NASDAQ made lower lows, closed near the lows, and the Russell made lower closes and um, lower highs, lower lows, and closed lower. So all of this adds up to not very positive. Let's watch and see if the S&P can hold up here. But uh, I know there's another tweet out about China negotiations are going well. Um, it's pretty interesting. Anyway, that, that that's the uh, commentary. So here we are um, with the PPO dropping below zero. You can see that when that happened um, in the past, that was a pretty good warning sign to make sure you were well protected if your portfolio started to get hit. Distribution days on the NASDAQ. Um, what we want to count here is just the number of days that are up and um, up on volume and they're a down day, so they're red. So here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four, here's five, and yesterday or Thursday was six. So these are big distribution uh, zones and when you get kind of three, six in three weeks, that's usually telling you the market's getting pretty weak. So um, obviously the PPO falling below zero adds on to that. Um, it, we could go up and talk about what percentage of decline and count each one specifically, but just real quick rough for work. The volume is saying we're getting more down days than up days. NASDAQ, um, advanced decline or accumulation distribution line still, you know, has been bullish for five years, so it's hard to be anything but bullish. Uh, the on-balance volume has dipped occasionally below the 65 period moving average. And so from those two perspectives, it's been a big uptrend. And if you can live through the 20% swings, it's all good. Um, PPO is just about to roll over here. Unless we have a big up week, this looks to me like it'll actually give a sell signal. New York Composite, this is the monthly chart. And again, the PPO looks like it's rolling over here. So it needs a pretty strong week this week to kind of get back up on the trend of breaking through the signal line. And again, just monthly downtrending momentum, pretty important to watch for. And in 2011, 2012, it took a year to kind of turn it up. Now here we've had this year already with the slope down, but haven't broken down. But I think if we get this secondary touch here, this looks pretty uh, daunting actually. And we're right above the 10 month moving average. So it would need to drop, what are we, 12, five, 40 points um, to give us a sell signal by next Friday. 
Uh, zooming in, you can see that this was quite a reversal bar. We've now taken out the last couple of months lows. So this is uh, quite bearish indeed. And, and this is a zoom in on the PPO, but you could just see uh, things are getting they don't look that strong to me and again we're making lower highs on this particular index which is a group a wide group of stocks from the new york composite rather than just the big markets okay i'm gonna kind of zoom over the russell the bottom line is relative strength is getting weaker we've lost support of the 40 day 40 week moving average or the 200 day um, so this is breaking down it's a down sloping ppo is rolling over and we are just a hair less than 0 0.01 or sorry 0 0.1 of crossing and giving a sell signal on the ppo so so close to zero that's a big problem for me in my work so this if the market's going to hold this is really where it needs to kind of get a grab on it before some real institutional selling would come in um the TSX, the Toronto Stock Exchange, you can see we're still making lower highs and lower lows on the big picture below the 10 week moving average or the 50 day PPO falling below zero. All of those are bearish indicators. And so it's again, we're really at an inflection point here with everything sitting right near zero. If it's not going to bounce real soon, like it did back in kind of this period in here, um, we'd expect bigger pain for longer down low. On the weekly chart, Canadian market PPO is still uh, up high and hasn't crossed yet. So that's a little bit more bullish, but um, continuing to watch for that. That to me is a, a pretty important place on the charts. Okay, um, this value line geometric, I've added it. This is probably the first time you've seen it in a long time with me. Uh, but on here, what happens is these black lines, you can see at the very bottom, uh, if I zoom in, well, maybe if I click on the chart and zoom in, you can see these are set at 212 week intervals. And this is the value line geometric. But one of the things I wanted to point out was um, that the market would top when these full stochastics, I've noted them here, and now we've pulled down and are bouncing up. And it's pretty much right on the line. It was a little bit after here, a little bit after here, quite a bit after here, well after here, and well before here. So the I tried to go back and do the cycles on the S&P 500. I can't get the cycles to work out. Uh, but it's interesting on this full stochastic, just watching um, using this cycle. And it's off the 1991 low. And you could just see we've rolled over here and fell below our 40-week our moving average. This is a pretty critical place on the chart for us. And I would say the only example where this didn't hold up was QE. So um, in 2000 and in the year 2000, this rolled over and failed, um, bouncing back up here. And then in 2007, it just kept going after a bounce test. And then all through QE, it was well supported and every bounce was a buy. And then in 2015, uh, it rolled below so that was a sell signal and now here we are coming up against this line now and it looks to me like it wants to sell so i don't have a lot of comfort that um that we have a lot more to go but i'll just say that this cycle and these market tops um usually we have one after every um 2000 or 200 day uh period here 212 week period so these are quite wide but call it a business cycle 40 40 weeks or 50 weeks so with that, um, you know, you're looking through here, these market tops, the only one we didn't get a market top in, um, this one came a little bit early, this one came a little bit late, and then we didn't get one at all in the period from 2003 to 2007, and then we got a big one at the end there. So anyway, it seems to me like we're on some sort of a cycle uh, for these rolling over. Shanghai just was weak. Nikkei was weak. Uh, Nikkei tested the 21,000 level. I've been watching that, talking about it. They were in aggressively buying the market this week, um, but just trying to hold this 21,000 level. We'll see what happens next week. This is a pretty important part on the chart from, from my work. Okay, U.S. dollar. Um, again, the U.S. dollar closed below last week's close, but still made a higher high higher low but close slightly lower and close near the bottom of the bar so that's not quite so bullish um, 
but it, I'd have trouble going against it. Um, that 97.5 level I've been watching, it what did it do? It got above it for a couple of weeks and then reversed. So anyway, um, keep watching which way this dollar wants to go, but that 97.5 level continues to be a very important point. Um, zoomed in, you could just see trying to hold above these previous highs, and we rolled over quite steeply um, for the second half of this week. So continue to watch that. And we've got a downtrend here in the PPO. We've just looks like we're going to hook, make a lower high here with a similar high in price. So maybe we come down um, and test a little bit. And I think if the dollar weakens at all, that might give commodities a bounce because. Quite frankly, they look pretty ugly. Um, UUP, you can see that big uh, gap up and then closed lower, so pretty much a reversal bar, and now we're breaking down to middle of last week's price action. Uh, the Euro just continues to grind in this channel, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, um, gently working its way down. This one had a lower high, lower, lower high, lower low, but a higher close, so... Um, again, the channel doesn't look that good, but at least it's trying to get going. I will say the PPO turned up this week and actually, I think it, yeah, it went positive just by a heartbeat. So, okay, the Euro, um, again, on this daily chart, just grinding lower, uh, you know, really working traders here. This is like a week, each week it uh, reverses. So anyway, hard work. This uh, 12, 1, 12, 50 level, very difficult to, to get through or get support at. Just keeps leaking past it. We're right below the 65-day moving average. Anything above that might finally get it going. But look at this PPO, just grind sideways. We haven't seen anything like that going back for five years. So um, quite interesting. We'll see if all of a sudden there's a sudden burst to the upside. And the Swedish Krona actually made a reversal going back to three-week highs here. So perhaps we get some bounce in the euro uh, over the next two weeks. Uh, British Pound continues to test this three-year trend line again with Theresa May leaving this week um, or announcing her resignation. Uh, pretty big deal, but the British pound made lower highs, lower lows, and a slightly lower close. Let's call it flat on the close. Yeah, minus 0 0.04. Uh, just big picture daily, lots of chop, nothing really, but 126 looks like an important level. This would make a head and shoulders base if that's what it was going to be. Uh, we'll keep watching, but again, testing these main lows. This is the one I'm most interested in this week, and it's the Japanese yen. And uh, this is JPYUSD. The other tickers I've got here is dollar sign XJY. But the point I want to make here is this tried to finish up near the highs. It was the highest close going back, you know, for three or four months. Uh, so pretty big deal. And obviously, if this started to take off, that would be a risk-off environment. And that would suggest that uh, gold perhaps could rally. So uh, keep that in mind. But the PPO actually came down to zero and bounced off it. That's very bullish, and it's making a higher low. So, um, And it did close above the 65-week moving average. Lots to focus on, and you can see the line in gold here hasn't really started to make this turn yet. But I think if, it's, if it goes suddenly, that would be one of the things to watch for. Okay. Um, this is the XJY instead of the JPYUSD. And the one point I want to make on here is this trend line is really important. It's a little clearer to see here. Uh, going back two years, and we're pretty much right up against it. It's not going to get much narrower in here. But the PPO, again, had turned up. So I'm, I continue to watch to see which way this wants to go. But I think a breakout here, and you probably want to look in on the gold stocks. Canadian dollar, um, nothing, just grinding into the corner, pretty much a spinning top uh, sort of day or a doji uh, week. We just kind of closed where we opened, so nothing going on there, and flat PPO, so no momentum, but well below zero. Um, daily version, the Aussie dollar, this one continues to 
show us something new. So it broke down last week and then this week bounced off that low and closed up what halfway in this bar so this is kind of a place where we'd expect resistance so if this was going to start to fall again it would probably die somewhere in here 69.50 and roll back over so just keep your eye out on that but the breakdown to me looks real and uh, you know we're testing that 2016 low so perhaps that's why the Australia stock market is rising because their currency has been falling but uh, I don't have um, the insight to that. I just thought it was interesting that two elections had pushed stock markets to new highs. Okay, um, this is the emerging market currencies and you can see pulled down quite hard and falling with copper. So they, they ride pretty well together. Anyway, watching to see if this started to bounce around here, that would be emerging market currencies bouncing above zero. Commodities might take off. So perhaps there's some hope. But again, we made lower highs and lower lows and closed higher than last week. So a bit of a mixed bag. Um, LIBOR, the only reason to show this chart is we have now actually crossed the 40-week moving average on LIBOR and the, the momentum indicator is going below zero and the PPO is going below zero. So nothing suggests this is good. Um, I will show you the IRX. I don't know if I have that chart there. No, I don't. Um, but it actually gave us a signal on Friday, uh, late Friday, as a matter of fact, didn't early in the day. So here is the HYG compared to the, I or just the HYG, and you can see really quite you know, quite a meaningful drop below its 10 week and pointed straight down here. So I'm not very bullish and, and it looks to me like we're going to get a PPO sell signal next week. So if that continues, I think, I think if we get any more down price action next week, all kinds of PPOs are going to roll over. And one would be, um, the bank index, um, S and P 500 would give us a confirmed one. NASDAQ would give us a confirmed one, uh, all of that kind of thing. So really important places for momentum in the next week. Um, the the 7 to 10 year bond continues to shoot up to higher ground here, breaking through this horizontal support and resistance. Um, broke through the downtrend and momentum has now moved higher and has taken off to the upside. This um, is the ratio of HYG to IEF, both unadjusted, so dividends removed. Failing at the 40 week, we saw this in 2011, that was meaningful, 2015, that was meaningful, and now again, 2016. So we're rolling over below zero. This is not a, usually a good place to roll over. Anyway, continue to watch that, but I think it's a, a bigger deal here. LQD, um, trying to break this down sloping trend line. These are the corporate bonds. Um, no surprise, people moving to safety, right? So U.S. two-year rolled over, continues to look to me like a meaningful uh, confirmation of a major top in the other markets. Um, the BlackRock Muni Fund, um, it, it was flat this week. Uh, but again, it's been on a big run telling us to be very cautious here. And, you know, the scale is so small, but it's moved up what uh, off the lows I'll call it 11.5 it's moved up roughly 10 percent or a little bit more than that uh, tnx made lower lows for the month now after an inside month last month so this continues to suggest we still have uh, lots of room to the downside and on a weekly chart again you can see breaking through the march lows so that's uh, bearish and again we're down near two-year lows so lots to Lots to tell us that this isn't over yet uh, from the bond market perspective. Five-year yield, same thing, plummeting lower. Uh, this is compared to the bank index, and you can just see the bank index is pretty much working its way lower as well. Um, let's just go to this one. This is the IRX, and the point I want to make here is see how this was... Uh, holding up above this area it is now to me this looks like a rolled over top i think it's complete with the break here below 23 which was kind of in this range so this is i think a meaningful um rollover and it it brings out other charts um 
now that that's broken down let me just go get those other charts i had them set up somewhere um the point i the one chart i want to show you is down here and i'm just going to try and flip through it quickly i are yeah that one, this one, up a little bit. Okay. So this one, uh, I've marked all the recessions going back to 1970 on it. And when this rolls over, this is the I IRX three month compared to the 10 year and rolled over. And you can see here, it looks pretty much like a rollover since February. But again, on that chart, I just showed you the, this chart over here um, on the other tab. You know we're really starting to making this roll over top and if i look at this chart one of the things you're looking for is when this starts to cycle down now back in 1989 1990 this spiked over and didn't change anything but the recessions were clearly when this started to move down so anyway watch very closely for this as it rolls over that would be something to watch for okay um bonds just uh, i mean all the bond charts look bearish i'm not sure we want to keep going through them all so let's um speed that up a bit um this is just the 10 year the 30 year to the 10 year ratio and that continues to hold in line has not broken out yet to the upside i did um I did have two other charts. Um i'll post them in the blog later but it basically puts how the how some of the bond charts behaved in uh, 07 and how they're behaving now and you can make your decision based on what you see but it looks pretty similar to me transports continued to push lower and they really need to hold this 10,000 level uh, relative strength is breaking lower so not very good and and once again we're back below kind of where the ppo usually turns higher so this is a pretty cautionary place and on the weekly chart it's even more severe and the reason I say more severe is because you've you had this breakout down below. Now you've made uh, a lower high here than the prior high and rolling over at zero. It looks to me all set up for everything to go lower. This has not crossed yet. It's got another week probably to go before the transports as a group breakdown. The airlines are already, you know, just kind of oscillating. They haven't done anything for a long time. That's a three year chart. Here's the airlines just jogging sideways, no reason to own them. Nobody really showing them up, showing up to buy them either. And the PPO rolling over right at zero, so that suggests more caution to me. Railroads holding up better, but did break the upsloping trend line. But Friday was an inside day with nothing really going on. So a lower high, a higher low, and a lower close. So a little bit bearish with the lower close, but an inside day usually means... Um, uh direction unsure or perhaps the selling has stopped so we'll see um the one thing we're making lower highs here in momentum and higher highs here i think if transports start to break um we might finally see the rails follow along but they've been outperforming the s p 500 for two years so that's been bullish um, and on my railroads chart here, the next high has potential to be a final high because momentum got so weak here, it went below zero. So just a cautionary place and it looks like it's rolling over to me. So um, th those don't look great. Trucking has already given us all the sell signals. Uh, PPO rolling over below zero. Uh, you can see it's crossed and accelerating lower. Broke support at 750. There's support down here at 650. That's a long way below to say, yeah, I'll wait. Um, but I think they're moving meaningfully lower. So, um, and we got a bear market signal back in uh, 2018, and, and it's rolling over as per plan or as the chart would expect. Autos are ugly, nothing good going on there. Look at this chart breakdown. And obviously, a big component of that is Tesla, and it's literally been. Uh, just dropping multiple percentage points per week. So um, real big uh, pain area there. Broker dealers very close to rolling over at zero, um, trying to hold the uptrend line so far, but uh, back below their 40-week moving average. So not that bullish. Looks bearish to me. 
And then the utilities broke out to new highs this week. So that's bullish people moving into safety. And the PPO looks like it wants to start to break out to the upside here, really um, suggesting more strength. The industrials rolling over actually a confirmed sell signal here on the PPO um, triple top breaking down below the 10 week and barely holding above the 40 week this week. So important, I think if the railroads give any, if they weaken any more, this is probably where we're going to see it right here. So keep watching that. And of course the semiconductors, they, they had a brutal week. They fell really, really hard. They did close. Um, well, they gapped up on Friday, closed in the middle of the range of Thursday's range, but uh, still pretty weak. And if we just uh, click over here on the week, they were down six and a half percent. So that's hardly bullish. I did hear somebody say, you know, let's take a bite in here just because you're right in the middle and there's, you know, good opportunity for support. But all of my charts are so weak that I, I would not move towards the the semiconductors until I start to see something give me a rounded bottom uh, that's a little more bullish. Um, I, I have been watching this and I'm trying to measure this ratio, but this is the Australia stock market compared to the S&P 500. And it's starting to make a base here similar to back in 2000, 2001. And this was obviously the commodity bull market. Um, the stock market didn't bottom back in here until 2002, 2003. So maybe that's what this is trying to tell us, but we didn't get that signal in 2007, 2008. So I'm watching very closely to see, I guess we did a little bit, but uh, here's 2007. Yeah, pretty much marked the top. We didn't get any real signal of this, but we did a, get a commodity reversal signal at the top and at the bottom here. So maybe that's what's building out. And we're going to go on a big commodity bull run in the next couple of years sometime. Um, CRB. So again, still having a down month, nothing that bullish and watching the US dollar at that 97.50 level. CRB on a weekly basis has now touched the lower Bollinger Bands. Usually when it first touches the lower Bollinger Bands, that does mean lower levels um, are coming. You could get a rally off of there. But again, we last week was an outside week after uh, a short range week, then a wide out week and then this week lower highs lower lows so it looks to me we're probably going to ride the the uh, Bollinger Bands down for a little bit on commodities. Um, okay all of these charts just got smoked with crude falling apart here. Crude down below the 10 week moving average for the first time since January um, breaking down hard. I mean it, it was down six and a half percent this week and natural gas is below its uh, 10 week moving average as well. I, I think that might spike up just to trade counter trend to the S&P, but I don't know. Um, heating oil clearly broken down and gasoline broken down. So all of this is confirming and making lower highs. So it's a mess out there. I think the oil um, energy sector is in a void for a while. Uh, corn, uh, big breakout this week with um, Amount of corn planted doesn't appear to meet demand. So uh, watching that very closely. Soybeans obviously under pressure from China, but wheat also tried to bounce. So we'll see. That was one good area. Now here's gold just wiggling in here for the last six weeks. Um, so it's calm before the storm. I don't know. We had that kind of calm before the storm in silver and it was a breakdown. Uh, I keep watching it just because the volume's been so low. Copper. Getting down near this lower trend line, this is a pretty important place here, 270. And I think a week ago or during my market buzz, maybe on Wednesday, I mentioned there's a huge uptrend line in copper going back 10 or so years. If that trend line breaks, I think that's a meaningful problem uh, globally for global growth. So keep your eye on that one. I think it's a 260 level. We need to watch for that. Um, aluminum clearly uh, rolling out of town, not flying very well at this point in time. Livestock broke the 10-week moving average a week, a few weeks ago and has broken the downtrend. And this looks broken. Uh, uptrend is broken. So lots of things going wrong there. Uh, sugar and coffee. Sugar a lot lower. Coffee actually got a bounce this week up above its 10-week moving average for the first time since um, January. Yeah, so pretty ugly. Cocoa and cotton. 
Real quick, Cocoa's breaking out to new nine-month highs. Cotton not getting the memo, so uh, down and out. Marijuana ETFs continue to roll over, but not with aggression. And so that's an interesting one, how it wants to try and hold here at the 40-week moving average. Just keep watching them. I think if the overall market goes, these might struggle. But look at how weak the volume has been um, in here. And until the volume starts to pick up again, I think you can wait. You can see back in here when the volume went very quiet, it was a good place to just avoid. I will say this relative strength trend line is still holding up. And I thought it might actually slam down through here. So it is behaving better than expected. Better than I expected. Maybe others expected better. Uh, coal breaking down again this week. Uh, steel stocks all going lower. No real bounce on any of that. Looking at lithium, that's pretty much uh, ugly. And rare earth metals got a bounce here as uh, the leader of China went for a walk through their rare earth factories reminding... Um, America where they get some of that stuff from. So anyway, lots of politics going on this week in the Commodityville. Energy index, this is rolling over. Um, so very tough news. And again, the energy stocks are already getting smoked. Uh, going down to XLE, you can see this chart clearly breaking down. And that Thursday gap when oil really set lower um, doesn't bode well at all. So uh, I think there's a lot of room for downside on energy, even though the stocks, you wonder how low they can go. Um, the refiners not doing very well in here. They look weak. Fracking, uh, the unconventional oil producers just got smoked. Uh, PPO looks like it's going to roll over below zero. That's bearish. So um, daily... Crude oil daily, you can see the 64 level. I mentioned it last week. That's a pretty important place on the chart. Well, that was pretty much the exit, and uh, down we went. So hit that number on Monday, and it was bye-bye. So oil dropped uh, from 64 to 57. That's ugly, and again, this straight-down move looks very impulsive, so I'm expecting lower lows. I don't know if it's 36 or something, but I'm expecting this to weaken significantly. You did get one of these back in 2018 where it fell with the market and then rallied out of here. But I don't know, just the way all of the energy stocks look, they don't look like they're ready to rebound yet. Um, crude on a weekly basis, I think that chart says everything. We're back below the 10-week and the 40-week while they were close together and rolling over near zero on the PPO. This just a very difficult spot here for us you kind of want to see that hold like it did in 2017 and then that was a rally uh, but here it just kind of as those two lines were crossing you thought you might get support and it just broke right through it that's a big problem uh, crude oil yearly natural gas uh, let's go to nuclear this is uh, appearing to start to bounce so the nuclear utilities are starting to bounce so that's worth watching downtrend has been broken in the momentum so that should be bullish this trades no volume, but gives you an idea just what's going on with the power producers. Uh, uranium itself, that chart's ugly, living in the bottom right-hand corner. Nothing there for us. Let's get into copper. Copper's a pretty important one, and it's rolled over at zero a couple of weeks ago, and we've been sliding ever since then. And here we are uh, falling below zero now, so we're actually negative um, on the the copper PPO and below the signal line. So until something improves, these commodities look rough. And again, I'm expecting lower levels. The, that weekly chart of copper, really bad. You can see this uptrend here is important. There's also, let's just unwind the tape here. Um, if we go back and look, there's this 2002 low. And if we run a line off of here and come up through here, it's right in here at this 260 level. So um, again, be very careful. Look at these red arrows here, just rolling copper over. Um, I would just say your bear market is continuing. And if this was a three wave down, this was wave one, two, three wave would put it down here. That would be ugly. Don't want to see that. Um, so copper, steel, this chart broke and just continues to drip 
lower. Um, it's, it doesn't look like it's moving down fast, but these numbers are actually $2.50 increments, so it's quite uh, depressing to see how fast the steel stocks are dropping. I will say a lot of the full stochastics in the commodities are in the bottom of the range. Now, they can stay there for a while, but uh, that's just not a bullish place to be, so keep watching. XME, uh, the materials and mining testing this December 2016 or 2018 low, pretty critical. Uh, looking at the XMA, the Canadian one, this one is down against a very major support level. No volume showing up here either, so very weak interest. Let's go through gold stock or the gold now. One of the things I want to talk about here specifically is if you look at gold, look at all of the, the volume and contracts and that kind of thing. Now we'll go look at, and this is per week, and go look at gold on a daily basis. And what you see here is, you know, these downtrend lines are trying to break and we had that big thrust on Thursday and then a small pullback. If by the seventh day, so call it a couple of days out here, we get through 1290, that would be very bullish to see this kind of come down, break out, pull back and then take off to the upside. So it's important to watch mostly because of the lines here. And on the weekly charts, we're just seeing some really interesting trends on gold volume. Uh, so this week was a, a low one, but when we go to GLD, you'll see what I mean. It's quite different. But we did have a couple of weeks, three weeks, where volume was starting to increase. So I was wondering if that might be showing us something. GLD is behaving way different than the actual futures contracts. So look at the volume profile on gold here. We're very weak, very weak, very weak. And when we look across the chart, there was a September low in early uh, September 2018. And then going across this chart, there's literally even through the November, December half days, nothing until all the way back in 2016 where we had some really extreme lows towards year end so those were hard to use but again want to keep watching here in april may of 2015 volume got really quiet and obviously the market broke lower so continue to watch this what i'm one of the things I like the most here is the PPO is above zero. So if it was going to come down and start to bounce from here, this is very bullish. And if I just take this chart and open it up, whatever, uh, 14 years here, what you'll see is what I'm watching for is this PPO bouncing above zero. And you saw it back in, he, we're, we're there right now. But in both these cases, there was a bounce in 06, and then a pullback and then another bounce. So don't know if that's what we're going to get, but it's that kind of thing we're watching for. And you can see just looking across this chart, you know, since the bear market started, we really have not had that setup where it comes back um, while well above zero bounces off zero and takes off to the upside like it did in this 06, 07 period. The other thing to be, um, I'll call it aware of, is if we just... Um, yeah, let me look. No. Um, if we just keep an eye out for uh, the Japanese yen. And the reason I want to do this is um, XJY. Back in the time frame of 2007, one of the things that happened was both um, uh the yen had been on a big downtrend and broke out. And as it broke out, gold broke out from a little bit more of a horizontal situation. So um, we're sitting here watching this gold just kind of grind sideways. And the yen, um, we, we talked about that earlier. If the yen chart's going to break out to the top side, I think there's there's some opportunity there in gold. And it, will, it would be worth taking uh, a shot at. Okay. So that's important. Uh, silver, this was also kind of an interesting one. Um, silver just continued to make lower lows and lower highs uh, this week. Doesn't look like anything, but look on this. The volume was quite low here for the week in silver, but looking at the SLV ETF, 
Okay, this was the lowest volume in the year. We had that again this week. And so going back, you know, a long way, this one was the uh, Thanksgiving break. But what we're seeing is this all of a sudden really, really low volumes that haven't shown up for a couple of years. And, you know, that's not a bad place to be aware of. Sometimes you can get a huge rally off of that. So um, just keep watching low volume. At least it raises our attention. Um, nothing really here. I do want to show lumber and, and the big thing to watch for here on lumber, you know, momentum has rolled over on this weekly chart. We really want to see 300 hold. Uh, that's a pretty big deal, but here's the wood ETF and you can see this looks like it's ready to just keep dropping. So, um, doesn't look like it's building a base yet. Okay, a couple of other charts that are interesting. Uh, so this chart here is the percentage of stocks with the on the NASDAQ 100 with the PMO rising. And what you see here is the PMO is falling and it's down to whatever, 15 or something. It's near the low end of the range. So normally after a dip that big, you'd expect a bounce. And obviously that, that would be something to be expected, but in... The October, September, November, October, November, December time frame, as things just kind of fell apart, you did get some rallies. And again, the PPO on a daily basis would turn up, but look at, it just kept resuming the downtrend here. So um, for me, all of my chart work suggests we're going lower, but uh, this also suggests we're at an area where we could look for support. Um, looking in on the Russell versus the S&P 500, you know, it's getting down to the low end of the range of how far underperforming it does. Uh, that doesn't mean anything. doesn't mean it can't go lower. Uh, but in 2015, that was a pretty good clue that things were getting weak. And as it started to break down, it was a, a good time to be aware of. And we're very close to that again. Okay. Um, I don't think there's anything here. I want to go grab fan ETF. And the, the reason I want to point this one out is look at how this is behaving pretty well. I mean, it's down slightly here, but this is up in the top right-hand corner. So for an energy ETF, um, or, you know, they make energy, just worth watching to see what's going on. And here's first solar, and it looks like it's going to roll over in momentum here, but um, it's lost its 10 week moving average this week, but the, the whole thing to watch for here is does it get a nice pullback and then a rally out of here? Cause it's behaving much better than a lot of the other sectors. So something going on there. Uh, here's, that was for solar. Here's tan. The other one was fan. Um, here you see a $26 level and a breakout through that I think would be pretty bullish and it wouldn't take much to get above uh, 2018 high. So anyway, worth watching. The scooter ranking says it's one of the better performing um, ETFs of the year. So pretty interesting to see that. Okay, so I've covered off most of the things in my regular uh, version that I cover off. The one, I, I had a couple more things to just uh, shoot through here. One of them is the Nikkei and what's going on there. Um, Every one of these red lines, they're buying $700 million worth of ETFs per day. And I had read on uh, my Twitter feed, I think it was a Bloomberg chart that said they had bought 80% of all of the ETFs back in January. By, yeah, by January. And um, I saw one today that said, or yesterday that said 73%. Uh, either way, it's a lot. But they're you can notice that all of a sudden the concentration on them buying again is as heavy as it was back in December. And I think we just need to be aware that um, they're starting to sense some issues and, and trying to hold this 21,000 level. So if I just, again, draw the line on 21,000, we'll see what happens. Um, but I think it's kind of critical that they don't break through here. It's too hard to see with everything else, but this is an important support level. And we briefly dipped below it on Friday um, and they, they bought the market. So on the open, when we opened below, uh, Central Bank came in and bought more stuff. So lots of things going on out there that are, are uh, attracting my attention. Um, when I went through my 
uh, recession watch, which is uh, this chart list. Uh, you know, a couple of things that are, are coming up. This uh, trucking trend line has broken quite clearly, and the momentum is below zero. When we start to see this, look at on the relative strength here. There's a real big level that I don't think we want to break um, coming across here. So trucking doesn't usually get this oversold. Makes me wonder if we're actually going to get a bounce here or if things do uh, keep falling apart. And I think if if we do see, um, you know, some more weakness either from from the economic data where, you know, at the end of the month we'll start to get um, uh, more... Uh, purchasing managers index data and that kind of stuff and it's been coming in really really weak together as a group I just see a lot of weakness now if I'm looking for things that are bullish you know this consumer sentiment um, up right near the highs I will say in 2000 it was up there too and it you know it fell pretty quickly here's 2007 this was January 2007 and it worked its way lower pretty quickly so I'm not sure it, it probably more correlates with the stock market shooting up than it does with, you know, so optimism and business growth shooting up. I will say that as long as this um, PPO indicator is above zero, that's usually a bullish thing. So keeping track of that. And then one of the other charts in here, um, not the broker dealer, I don't think that was it let me just check yeah so the broker dealer the one thing I noticed is we had this big negative uh, MACD histogram and then we rolled over and it's just gone negative again so it's worth paying attention to uh, this is a longer time frame not a short period uh, I used a 40 over 80 but essentially one of the one of the critical points on all of these charts is just uh, you know there's there's a lot of uh, charts set up right at this market top, if this was a market top. And so uh, I want to keep pointing them out more to um, illustrate that we, we can use these charts to help us find major points of inflection in the market. The fact that it plays out over weeks and months makes it way more difficult and people may, might lose patience or frustration with it. But I'm pretty sure that if you were... Uh, uh, a fundamental analyst using money flows or something like that, you would probably not be able to see um, so many charts lined up that are that are um, being tested right now. And here's the Dow Jones uh, Global World Index, and it's back to testing its 40-week moving average. It tried to bounce off it on uh, this week, and the PPO is looking like it's going to give us a cross here. Well, I, I would suggest this week. Everything adds up that on a global basis, we're starting to see it on a, on a weekly basis. Um, in, inside the U.S., things just keep getting a little softer. And while, while we have uh, guys like uh, David Rosenberg saying, you know, we're going to be in a recession in the second half, and the Fed saying, you know, we don't even see tightening happening this year in some cases, I think it's that gap that, that is so wide and... Um, Anyway, the charts look to me like we're all set up to, to break lower, as I mentioned on my introduction, um, living on the edge or past the edge. We're at an inflection point. So just if things start to bounce here, great. If things don't start to bounce here, this is a pretty meaningful uh, week or two in the charts. With all of that, thank you for taking the time to join me. I hope uh, there's some good information for you there. Uh, Please stay tuned to the markets in here because it's not uh, for the weak at heart. Thanks, everybody. Bye -bye.